This is Twit. We're talking to Amy Webb. She is a futurist, uh, the founder of uh, the Future Today Institute, a regular on our shows, and uh, the author of a couple of books, uh, including The Signals Are Talking, and now the new book, The Big Nine, How the Tech Titans and Their Thinking Machines Could Warp Humanity. And really, uh, what this is, is a call to step back. Let's think about the implications of what we're doing, because in a, in a way, we're in a race right now. You say that it's China and the U versus the U.S., that the, these are the big two players. Is that the case? Yes. Um, so again, like the G Mafia are based in the Valley and the Bat are based in uh, China. And but but I also just want to point out, we seem to keep approaching big issue, big geopolitical issues um, as though it's the U.S. pitted against China and there's no other country on the planet. You know, the the, the decisions that that we are making affect everybody everywhere. Um, it just so happens that at the moment, uh, there's a there's a ton of capital, there's a ton of activity, and we are starting to see some real breakthroughs. So, um, in the United States, there's an antagonistic uh, relationship, or just sort of a non-relationship between uh, Washington D.C. and and the tech community in Silicon Valley. There are plenty of tiny uh, examples of of how that's starting to change, but for the most part, um, we we have a we spend very little money outside of the military on serious R&D in, in science and tech. Uh, technically, we have a few departments that focus on this, but they're, they're not, they're woefully understaffed. Um, and, and all you have to do is take, you know, click on any, uh, listen to any episode <laughs> of Twit over the past like three years. Um, and at some point, somebody's going to bring up one of these companies did something wrong. Right. Uh, somebody got upset about it, right? That's not what's happening in, in China. So in China, um, you the bat may be independent uh, companies, but by virtue of the fact that they are Chinese companies, they are very much under the thumb of Beijing. Um, you have a president, Xi Jinping, who is brilliant, who is young, and who has effectively been elected president for life because they've had a few... Um, a few governmental and policy changes there. Um, China has a history, a strong history of long-term planning. Uh, and some of their initiatives are starting to shift the balance of global power. So there's something called the Brick and Road Initiative, which looks like an infrastructure plan. Basically, a lot of countries can uh, partner with, with uh, China uh, along its old Silk Road route, but also in places like Africa and, and South America now. Uh, and China is building bridges, it's fixing roads, it's bringing infrastructure, all of this is terrific. However, it's also a program um, that is helping usher in a new kind of era of AI. So um, in 58 pilot countries around the world right now, um, Chinese 5G is in the process of being deployed. Small cells are in the process of, of being deployed. Um, there are vast data co collection networks that we've already seen operational in parts of China that are now being deployed to other uh, countries. And so to me, what's concerning about this is while we argue amongst ourselves in the West and um, allow market forces to dictate the future, there's a big consolidation of power happening in China um, and, and China has a vested interest in seeing itself emerge as a new world power uh, with a new world order where it has tremendous leverage and is, and is calling the shots. We're already starting to see that play out. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the United States, of course, has a long history of using uh, um, international aid to do that as well, but we seem to have pulled back. You know, you, the U.S. has always struggled with this kind of isolationist streak going back more than 100 years. And we are in the, the, the down cycle of that right now where we're really pulling inward. Uh, it sounds like you think this is a bad time to pull inward, but I, I, I don't think you're saying, oh, we should be doing what China's doing either. No, and this is, this is the problem. Um, the problem is you know, I'm I'm sort of politically independent, um, and I like open and free markets, and I think everybody should have a shot at success. And I don't like big, heavy-handed regulation. With all that being said, um, there's nobody minding the 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 story. It, you know, artificial intelligence. There's no switch. You can't just shut it. Like there's no way to shut it off. 
Um, is it a Pandora's box? Once you open it, it's there. And well, I mean, it's it is right. It it has been. It's yeah. been in some form of development now for hundreds of years. So it's just part of our continuum. The challenge is that uh, in the United States. Um, because we are a functioning democracy, our leadership changes hands every couple of years. The downside, of course, is that um, we've become really politically divided. And as a result of that, technology and science have unfortunately become victims of that political infighting and our, our own political instability, which means that at the tail end of the Obama administration, there was an, a national AI policy Um there were some parameters in it, you know, it wasn't self, uh, um, it, it didn't, it didn't sort of act on its own. It would have taken some departments and some people and everything, some funding, but, but we had the sort of bones of it. Um, we wind up with a new president who wants to go in a different direction and whoever the president is after this one. every will, four to eight years. That's the problem. That's right. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's president, right. she and is president for life. That's right. And I'm not saying it's like, almost it cultural, though, great. as you said, the Chinese have a long term outlook and always have. Uh, right. And they're not necessarily good at fulfilling the, the what's listed out in all the various right. initiatives and plans. Right. Um, but you, however, but what, would, what would be a Western appropriate way for us to act? I mean, yeah. given that we don't have the same culture as China, what how could we act that would be maybe more uh, responsible? So. So here's a, so like. You would never go work for the government. You, Leo, would never work for the government. Um, Actually, which is I fine. might. <laughs> but well, you have, not, but it's too late for me now. But but you know, people like Matt Cutts and uh, right. the U.S. Digital Service. I think he's doing a very good job of convincing uh, techies who perhaps had some antipathy towards government work to come work for the government. I agree. And Megan Smith, and uh, Megan, you the, know, our former CTO, right, is brilliant and uh, wise and uh, knows amazing people. The problem is that um, people alone, like amazing people like Matt and like, uh, you know, like that's not enough. Um, the problem is an institutional one, not a personnel one. So the challenge is that the US Digital Service is not like the Department of Agriculture. So it's funded, but it's, it's not seen as a strong, vital entity and it's, and it's new. So it doesn't have right. the benefit of, um, having existed for a very, very long time. So there has to be a way, I think, for us to create, well, I think I think a, a good way forward um, is to take a good hard look at all of our existing departments. <laughs> this is gonna, like, nobody's gonna do this. This is never gonna happen, awesome. Amy, you know that. This is never gonna happen. This is never gonna happen, but... Um, it's probably a it's probably a good time to audit the like the functions of the government right. and to rename a bunch of we those departments. We should modernize the government. Every president yeah. for the last eight years has said we should, or twenty years has said we should do but that. Like, it's and in a way, we, this is look at this is what makes America America for better or for worse is. We let private industry do it. That's why we have the G mafia. Government is uh, has is is temporal and and really doesn't seem to have any long term plan. And there's and we're not a dictatorship. It takes some. It would I take totally extremely agree. strong leadership to say hey, this is all wrong. Let's sweep the chessboard clean and start over again. That's not. Gonna I totally happen. agree. But when when on the opposite, in absence of having strong central leadership in this country. What we have on the other end of that spectrum is the market. And the problem with the market is, first of all, there's a lot of other variables that cause stocks to go up and down and investments to happen. Twitter and Elon, and whatever he's thinking for, you know, those five minutes. So there's a lot of other factors, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'm bringing up Elon. It's getting more. It's getting more it's, of a uh, pendulum swing. It's bad. Yeah, faster. It's bad. The clock's ticking faster. Um, so, so, so but, but that becomes a problem because... Uh, now we're making decisions based on money. It looks like a random walk, to be honest, perhaps in the direction of, of value creation. But, you know, and, and again, there's no strong leadership. Right. So and here's another great example. Just this morning. Uh, so SpaceX is getting ready for its uh, Dragon launch tonight. Um, tonight being or is it sometime early Saturday morning, March mm -hmm. 2nd? Yep. 
Um, Boeing is also working on a similar project. Why? Because the United States hasn't sent a human up on a United States vehicle in eight years. Why? Because we haven't had funding. Um, and, and so the government has sort of, thank God the private sector exists and there's companies who are willing to spend a ton of money to, to, to make this happen. Um, but, but you have to ask ourselves when we're talking about fundamental technologies where profit is a motive. And I, I don't begrudge these companies the ability to make a profit, but sometimes, you know, that desire to, to earn the profit butts up against what's in our best interests. And it's hard, it's hard to make those short-term yeah. sacrifices. It's really hard when, when money is on the line. I am not, so, I am not a avid uh, follower of Adam Smith and the invisible hand of the market and so forth. But if you gave me the choice between a top-down um, system as the bats have in China and kind of our freewheeling, let the market decide met many <laughs> companies uh, attempt I'd prefer what we have, honestly. Uh, prefer I prefer to live in a I country say, like that. And I think that time has shown that that actually is a, a very effective system. Sure, but is can't there be another option? A third way? I guess is my question. A third yeah. way. Yeah. Um, and, and, a, and that third way is going to require a leap of faith and some more sophisticated thinking. But is there a way for us to create a, you know some kind of center center of gravity that is both public and private, which is to say the G-Mafia and uh, universities and everybody in that ecosystem plus the government. Um, and it has an enforcement mechanism and the ability, and it has funding um, and it has all the stuff that, that it would need to create guardrails, to, to do some of these other things, to set not regulations, but some expectations that are more meaningful. I, I think that there is a way I think there is a way forward that's um, it doesn't have to be zero sum. Yeah.